Okay Problems Podcast, episode 264. The Lanoon episode. Wolf Doctor, did you know that Lanoon was the rushing Pokemon? I had no idea. This is very confusing. Apparently, it must run in straight lines. Whoosh. I'm like six again. <laughs> Greetings. I am the Wolf Doctor. And this is Miss Silver. And we'd like to welcome you to the Poke Problems Podcast. The podcast that runs up to 60 miles per hour in straight lines. <laughs> I guess it makes sense because the lines on the lanoon run straight down the body. Ooh. I never thought about it that way. See, this is why you're a doctor. You notice, observe all of these things. That's right. Well, Miss Silver, we have a lot of things to talk about, starting with Ooh. PAX East. We're going to do a little quick recap. That was two weekends ago, March 21st to 24th. And Wolf Doctor, this was the 20th anniversary of PAX. And I loved the PAX anniversary merchandise. I thought it looked Aww. great this year. It looked great. I'm so sad I never actually made it to the merch line because I was so busy, which is crazy. Miss Silver was very busy. You were in four or five five events? Yeah, four panels and one meetup. I might have almost died, but I made it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your meetups. Well, the, first off, there was the Pokemon cosplay meetup, which I am so happy that PAX allowed us to have this again. We first tried it out at PAX Unplugged last fall, and we had some great help from Professor Evergreen and so many cool cosplayers showed up. Of course, Voodoo, who if you've oh, not yes. seen him, is Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff <laughs> plays and mains Jigglypuff in Smash 2. But there were so many amazing Pokemon and trainers and related creatures there. And I did give out a prize for whoever had the best costume, which I think had to go to the Urshufu that was there. That is a cool costume. Like the mask, especially that's for the head of the Urshufu oh. is really great. I wonder how long it took them to create that whole outfit. About how many people came to your meetup? Ooh, more I'm than more sure. than twenty, certainly. Yeah, more than twenty, less than a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with it was probably around maybe thirty, forty people. I'm gonna guess, but the room was really tight, and apparently, I had some other friends who was there that I did not see all weekend, but they were there because <laughs> it was pictures. too small. Oh no! <laughs> but they. We're very excited to see all of the Pokemon. And someone, if you remember Drew, who we had on the podcast oh, recently, yeah. his girlfriend made this beautiful giant Rayquaza plush. Whoa. It was, oh, you know, I'm just saying, if you don't want that anymore, I will take that off your hands for every day, all day. It was beautiful. That's so cool. Yeah. Rayquaza being one of your all-time favorites. Yes. And it is the Year of the Dragon. It is very appropriate. Oh, it'd be so cool to have a dragon dance dragon that was a Rayquaza. Oh, oh good ideas, Maliba. <laughs> Twelve years from now, remember that. <laughs> Remind me. All right, but there were many, many, many other panels you were involved in. I can't even remember which order they were all in. I know. I feel like I'm doing them out of order now. Of course, you were there for this Nintendo feud. Oh my gosh, it was great this year. We had a DK and Mario theme, and Sean from New York dressed up as handsome Donkey Kong. He's handsome anyway, yeah. but you know. I was excited, because usually he's dressed up as Mario, but I mean, DK, <laughs> he's got it. And I always appreciate when Richard dresses up as Princess Peach. Oh, it's so beautiful. It makes me happy. And there were so many other good costumes there as well. We had a great costume walk, and there was someone dressed as... Did you see that Daisy cosplayer at oh, all? Oh, I did. I thought you were going to say Big Man, because that just made me laugh. Okay. Like, that was a fun, just a fun idea for a costume, <laughs> to be Big Man from Splatoon 3. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, because that's where Big Man first came out. Big Man was my favorite, hands down. I've seen pictures 
of big man cosplayers on the internet. And if you don't know who Big Man from Splatoon is, it's a giant manta ray. manta ray creature. So someone to make a giant. I've always loved manta rays. I've had stuffed animals of them since I was a kid. <laughs> is that weird? No, mantas are cool. But they did an absolute amazing job. But whoever this Daisy cosplayer was, the details on their costume, beautiful. And we had a lot of fun with the feud. I don't remember. Did Team DK win? Of course Team DK won. Well, they definitely DK. dominated all the competitions Donkey and stuff. Kong. I remember that. They were <laughs> they were up and about. Yeah. They the were high very energy strong. team. But there were definitely more Team Mario fans in the house. You could tell from the crowd. Oh, yes, yes. But DK, those fans are dedicated fans. And, and Team DK, Zansake, and all those guys, they were into it. And... When we had the contest for someone doing their best Tarzan Donkey Kong yell, Team DK just, I mean, they knocked it out of the park. <laughs> they did. They did. Uh, do you have any of the other players you want to give a big shout out to from that day? I was just, All of them? Yes, all of them. I'm so happy we even had Jewelry Jelly from Rebecca, yeah. Yeah, Rebecca from Nintendo, Nintendo Force. Force. <laughs> if you're not aware of Nintendo Force... If you were a fan of Nintendo Power or you like reading physical magazines because I, I was about to say because you're old like me. <laughs> just, you just like paper. Some people are into it. It's delicious. <sighs> it tastes so good. But this magazine, they have posters. They have comics. You should check out Nintendo Game Force. Game reviews is a huge part of it, too. Don't forget that, Miss Silver. I know, but the, the comics, that's always my favorite part. <laughs> I do like the comics. And we also had someone local. If you're in the Malden, Massachusetts area, there's a really cool guy. I never know how to refer to him, but his name is Stemwire in Discord right now. Was he on Team DK or Team Mario? He's DK, he was on right? DK. But he runs meetups for people to play games in person. And I was so happy that he showed up and we, we convinced him to come up on stage. He was good. I remember him. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about some of the other panels that you participated in. I just wanted to give out a shout out to Tabletop Systems Wars. Mm. Systems Wars. I can't remember exactly the name, but apparently this panel's been going on since Paxi started, and it was the end. Aniv- well, I guess it's the anniversary every year. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, our friend Matt Miranda was on this panel, and the thing about this panel that which you moderated, Miss Silver, you got yeah. to award the points and decide who won each battle. First off, there was a huge depth of knowledge across those panelists. They they had great answers for a lot of these questions, and they were able to make it funny, even if you weren't a huge, like, if you weren't tabletop. a nerd who knew everything about tabletops, they still made it compelling and funny. They were so great together. And for this panel, people in the audience would pitch an idea, like, what they want to see in the game system, and like you are saying, their font of knowledge for what game system for whatever style you want to play was amazing and natalie dude she hands yeah, down she kind of won she that. trashed everyone <laughs> like i feel like next year if they have me back again or whoever is their moderator they need to do it like natalie versus everybody else <laughs> oh, that's even better wolf doctor i was thinking like whose line is it anyway where you have the random points assigned for you should do the that. best you know idea for a game system but yeah maybe it should be her versus everyone yeah that was yeah that's true i think natalie did win yeah she crushed it she would have to do the reading the credits at the end Ooh, yeah she'd have to do like the thanks to the everybody for coming speech that would be the deal if you win you have to do some something at the end well what about our pokemon i choose you adventure this year the anniversary edition we had some great people Come on by. Someone who had come by a couple years ago, Maddie. I loved that. It was so cool to see Maddie back again. Yes. Very exciting. And she had a great Pokemon Pikachu headband thing going. Yeah. And I mean, she knew what she wanted to do. (laughs) could feel that. We had some great endings, too. I was very happy with the insurance fraud ending. The pig farm ending. That was a winner, too. (laughs) Yes. Beware of Giovanni. Anyone? Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to get back to that, but eventually we will be posting the story. Uh, we also used that story at Anime Boston with a few edits, and hopefully we'll have it up for other people to use in their streams. Like Debbie usually uses it for one of her streams at some point, which I love. 
Yes. I do regret that there were not more endings where you get eaten by LeChonk. So I was debating on just editing a lot of the endings where, oh, I'm sorry. It was going to be happy, but then you get <laughs> eaten by LeChonk. Uh, yeah. I, I also hope to see more of there. There were some really good evolution endings. We only Ooh. saw one. Yeah. We right. always need more. I love those endings. All right, Ms. Silver, you hosted yet another panel, the Street Pass. What was it just called? The Street Pass Meetup? It might panel? have been Street Pass 2, The Adventures of Finding Me 2, something along that line. That sounds <laughs> I'm right. I'm not sure. But this was a panel we had done at PAX West, and we had a different lineup of people here at PAX East and Anyone who had their 3DS, my Street Pass thing is now full from that and Anime Boston, despite trying to clear it out. They played Find Me 2 on stage, and also a lot of the really cool people who were on the paddle, like Demich, he has a huge, huge YouTube channel, but they talked about cool things you can do with your 3DS now that all of the online for 3DS is going away. That's that's maybe we should mention that right here, right now. Oh, this is a really important yes. reminder announcement that everyone needs to hear about the 3DS. It's very sad, but as much as I love my 3DS, the online features, the official ones, are going away very soon on April 9th. So if there's something you need to complete that you need the internet for, do it now. now. Right. And when it comes to Pokemon, this means that online battles and trading are going away for all the games on the 3DS. The Pokemon Bank will still run for the foreseeable future, and local stuff will all still function. But if you want to trade online or yeah. battle someone, that's going away. But Poke Bank will still be there, which means, I mean, I'm after, now that Anime Boston is done, I'm going to try and transfer a Pokemon. Oh, yeah, you have to move everybody up into your Pokemon home. I've only done a couple sets. There's a lot to do, Ms. Silver, a lot to do. There were a few more things we wanted to mention from PAX East. Besides how cool the merchandise was, <laughs> I am I am wearing my PAX East socks today. Oh. Um, I liked the color scheme this year. It was various shades of red and black, like a monochrome monitor feel almost, like when those you know vector graphics lasers is what we yeah. think of. The jackets look great. They did. We saw several people wearing them the next weekend at Anime Boston, <laughs> and I thought, that's a person with class and taste. Thank you. And did you see the little birthday, like, cat pin? Oh, yeah. There were so many cool... P Penny Arcade has really taken off, and there's just too much. There's They're an too much evil to corporation. <laughs> too good. <laughs> I want everything they have. But we did have a couple other events we attended that I really loved. Mm. I just couldn't get over how great... This is the first year I've ever made it Ooh. to the Friday night concert. Yeah, because a lot of times we're busy. <laughs> yeah, usually we're busy, and I always worry that it's going to be full. It turns out it's a big enough auditorium space, and the con is not so busy that you can arrive at any time and still be able to see, get a decent seat or stand on the floor and enjoy the concert. We stood for a lot of it so we could be up close to the stage. I think that's the way to go. Just get up and close so you can see the performers and dance. Have fun. Yeah, and there were four major performer sets, but they also like interacted a lot yeah and they did a whole bunch of stuff together so it was great former special guest insane in the rain on the main stage for this 20th anniversary concert congratulations carlos oh my god that was just so cool like it was so neat to see carlos with a whole backing band of people getting to do both game covers and original pieces and then yeah carlos was he did some guest spots in the Videri String Quartet, and he was in the final band for Dom Palombi's Game Night. Like, that was, yeah. I was just like, everyone there knew each other and was happy to be jamming out. So even though they had separate sets, technically, they all joined each other in different spots. It was just great. And I was super excited because I've never seen Mega Ran in person. He was and great. Dude, he threw it down. He was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just so much fun. It was a great few hours. We were there three hours. Something yeah, we like were that. there the whole time. I it mean, was, you, I couldn't leave. It was great. Yeah, I, I love the music events. Maybe I need to start going to Magfest or something so I can see more music. But that's on my checklist. Events. And that that was great. Yeah, even the opening quartet, like they opened up with the theme from Chrono Trigger, which is a very special game. I've even got the soundtrack on my computer, and like you could just watch that whole thing or dance along again and again. It was so good. So good. 
And another shout out to a random panel that we saw. Mm. Ms. Silver was in person. I actually watched live online because it was streamed on PAX 2 on Twitch. We saw that for the first, apparently this is the second time it's only been in America. Only the second time. The Dark Room. <laughs> With, is his name Mr. John Robertson? I think so. You die, you die, you die. (laughs) But I love it because he's doing something similar to some things I've created, but he has it in a masterful way. A sort of text-based, choose-your-own-adventure thing. And can can you ever not die in this? I was wondering that (laughs) myself. Like, is there a good ending? Is there an ending where you have an evolution or you don't get eaten by lechonks or whatever? (laughs) You know, that's, that's a tough question. And... I even got to talk to him a little bit afterwards because the style of his show, it almost seemed like something I would feel or experience at a Renaissance fair. Yes. It seems like it could play well at like Gen Con maybe too. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like he should go to Gen Con or even Gary Con or yeah. all those cool D&D conventions. He was awesome. It was such a fun time. It was a great time. I, I can't even make some of these jokes because we're a PG-13 show. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it there. But it was a hilarious show. Yes. Well, there were also a million different things going on on the floor. We tried a lot of different games, and it would actually be impossible to talk about all of them. But let's just say the Atari booth was one of the hits of the show. And, you know, Wolf Doctor, you told me that their Atari pins sold out. Oh, They also had Pong pins. I bought one of those. And, I I mean, the Atari booth, it's, it's always good. But they had sort of a remake, remastering with other things done of the game Lunar Lander. I don't even know when Lunar Lander came out. That's an old classic. They also have a new Pong adventure game called Gomp. What? I didn't see that. Oh, Miss Silver, you were not paying attention. Pre, one of our special guests for PAX East, who came in to visit us out of Chicago, Pre, uh, I think, was in on the, maybe on their Twitter street feed, a picture of Pre playing Gomp. So I, oh, man... I need to see, there, it's, there was, it's, it's their like, booth was so huge. There was, I didn't see that. It's like a cross between Pong and Marble Madness. You play as the <gasps> Pong. No. Yes. Okay. You, you, that's the best I could describe it, but it's like a puzzle slash, puzzle game slash Pong. Okay. Puzzle Pong. Where you go places with your pong. You are the pong. You are the pong. Uh, did you get to play Lunar Lander? I did. I did. Actually, I played with, with Melinda and your mom. Oh, I was impressed that they, how much they added to the game with Lunar Lander Beyond and. Oh yeah. I I look forward to it. Such a complicated, like that's a tough game for me. I, they made it a lot easier. I'm sure (laughs) there are much harder levels, but the demo was much easier than classic Lunar Lander. It was good. Miss Silver, you also recommended that we try Collapsus. I actually got the heads up from this. There was a Reddit thread about hidden gems of PAX. And that was posted on Thursday. When I went by them later, they said because of this Reddit thread, they had more traffic than they could ever imagine. It was a very popular booth. I'm glad I went during one of the weekdays. Um, yeah, I played with Pri and Melinda, and let's just say I won the multiplayer battle. So, okay. <sighs> okay. If anyone wants to become an expert at this, I there was one girl I played with who crushed all of us every time we did the multiplayer. It wasn't me, though. I know it wasn't the Wolf Doctor. It could have been. But this is a, I kept thinking of it as a match three type puzzle game, but it was match four. Right. And you can rotate the board around in different directions when you're trying to match these things. It's brilliant gameplay. And now later, we have to challenge each other, Wolf Doctor. That's right. Much later, because the beta for Android is already available in the App Store, but it is not yet available for Apple people. That's fine. We all know Apple is better. But it is going to come to, I think, many platforms, including the Switch. Yeah. So I look forward to playing it for real, for real when it comes out. And we finally have to give a shout out to Leon. Oh. Because Leon, a.k.a. Professor Evergreen, was in the Tekken 8 tournament and was on the main stage at the arena playing. Yes. And thank you to Leon, a.k.a. Professor Evergreen. Evergreen for forcing me to play the Tekken tournament despite not being an expert at Tekken 8. (laughs) He helped train me a little bit before the tournament. I had played it before. I played a lot of Tekken 7, but I actually defeated one of my opponents. I was proud of myself. Yay! Yay. But he was up there. He got to meet the winner 
of the tournament overall. Oh, that's right. I think there was one player who was a little more of an advanced player who's done like a semi-pro who was mm. in the tournament and Professor Evergreen was up against them. And yeah. that was just cool. It, it was great to watch. Like he was very good. And Leon did really good against him. I was impressed. Yeah. Like that's, that was awesome. We watched, yeah. I watched it. It was cool. Okay. All right, Miss Silver. I think the last shout out I want to give for PAX East is a shout out to the Mecca Noodle Bar <laughs> where we went and they humored us by letting us be like one of the last tables of the night with Pre and a bunch of our friends. Keith, Keith, all of those, yes. all those folks had a great time. Food was great. Drinks were great. Ooh. I loved it. I would definitely go back there. Like there's been more stuff popping up around the seaport area that's delicious. I didn't even know this was there. I'm so happy Pre pointed it out. I could, oh, I Wolf Doctor, I know you can't eat it. But they had some of those banh mi style, what, what do you banh call mi those? Banh mi sandwiches? Banh mi sandwiches. There was one made with Korean fried chicken that, dude, I mean, I could eat that every day for breakfast, lunch, dinner, <laughs> dessert, midnight snack, 2 a.m. snack, 3 a.m. snack. Oh, my God. That's so good. <laughs> oh! All right, Miss Silver. We should move on to talking about Anime Boston, which Ooh. is another awesome convention. That was just this last weekend, March 29th through 31st. Wolf Doctor, I don't even know if I'm recovered from that. <laughs> uh, oh, I am definitely not recovered from that. I didn't realize just how, I almost forgot how many people come to Anime Boston. From when we first went 20 plus years ago. It was we 20, went to the OG yeah. Anime Boston when it was at a hotel. Yeah, we went to the first year Anime Boston was a thing. And it's amazing to see how much it's grown and become a destination for people. Like, it is a very... Very filled con with a ton of activities. Just there's so much going on there. I think last year there was around 24,000 people there, which is crazy for the Sheraton and the Heinz Convention Center. Yeah. I mean, there are, the spaces are filled. There are activities going on all the time, and they're very subscribed, and it's just awesome. Let's just go with that. That's I wish. Awesome. Oh, man. Someday, since the whole reason... We went in the first place was because I was in an anime club at MIT. We were in anime class that year, Miss <laughs> Oh, yes, because Sean gave that class. We were in anime class while we were at MIT. And one of our cool friends, Sean Leonard, he had a whole class about anime. And he doesn't live in the area anymore, but if he ever comes back, he should definitely go. That would be a great meetup. Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> Old school. Yeah. I was there year one, Throw Anime Boston. Down. Well... The con takes place over three days, and I would say one of the features of Anime Boston is that it has a huge number of events, including Ooh. evening events, bands, masquerade, formal ball, semi-formal ball, just so many different things. Uh, and we actually were on staff at Anime Boston this year and hosted a few events. It was your idea, Ms. Silver, and it was a good <laughs> idea. Well, no, it wasn't my idea. It was Richard's idea for uh -huh. PAC. Well, I think you actually hosted... Four events? I'm not sure. Oh, so this first one here, the Pokemon Costly Meetup, if that's what you're adding on. I didn't host that one. I just attended it. Oh, nice. So I got off easy on that one. Though I did help out with some other events. Yes. Like, it's it's a cool... One of the things about Anime Boston that sets it apart is that it's like a fan run. I mean, there are people on the staff at Anime Boston, but they it's really like a ground-up kind of effort from those staff members who've been involved for a long time to make this con happen. So it's it's... You know, it's a very cool place to be on staff and to volunteer because everyone is just so enthusiastic yeah. about what this con is about. You will never see passion like you will see here. Well, let's talk about the panels that we worked on officially then, Ms. Silver. Though, if you did go to the Pokemon cosplay meetup, whoever was that Buzzwool? Give Whoa. you a call? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a Smolov there who was also at PAX East, and she was beautiful. Smolov is just a cute idea for a costume. No, I'm like, who does this? She was, oh, I was so excited to see her again. <laughs> okay, one of our panels was the run of the Pokemon I Choose You Adventure, Anniversary Edition. And I think it went maybe even more smoothly at Anime Boston than at PAX East. Yeah, and I was so excited to have some other people helping us out. We had Ricario, Lucario. That's right. <laughs> also known as Soljin. And... Rapak, of course, was here back again, Professor Evergreen. And we also had somebody who helped us last year, Brandon, 
one of Rapak's friends who, I mean, hilarious, Misty. Yes, a hilarious. And for these things, we have people act things out on stage. And we even had one of the other staff help us out, too. That's right. One of the staff was assigned to our room just to help us in case we needed help, Dan Marley. She worked at a Cynthia. Oh, yeah. yeah. But great. people embracing being Le Chonk. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> the chonkiest of chonks. That was that was a great panel. Chonk. And then our evening show on Friday. I I just loved it so much, Miss Silver. We had such a good time at the sketch showdown. I was amazed at how many beautiful artists showed up. Like we had from amateur to people who were professional and everything everybody drew was gorgeous they only had two minutes in the sketch showdown to draw against each other with a random topic but wow i was yeah i was impressed done i was just thinking to myself could i get that much done in two minutes i mean i mean you're better than i wolf doctor you could i'd I'd have like a little stick figure there i mean (laughs) it's it's like a it's like the amount of time you'd get in drawful or pictionary and these people put out like like these were big drawings these were like big big tablets they weren't they weren't little drawing on a little postcard or printer paper. They were like huge big pieces of paper. And they filled those papers. It was incredible. Multiple colors. Ooh. So cool. I was so excited about it. And we had a lot of folks um, who we know appeared at the panel and joined us. It was just, it was fun. Ms. Silver, my favorite moment is when we posed oh, for the panel. Okay, can we talk about how much I hate the wall <laughs> It was such a good idea. Oh, the I'm, best I'm, idea I've I'm ever had. I'm reaching across the stable trying to choke her right now. She had the idea that the comp- competitors should draw us in a, I don't even know what you said. Signature crazy, pose. Signature pose. <laughs> Your signature pose was hilarious. So, I mean, I got down on the ground and I was trying to show off the amazing boots that Professor Evergreen made for Mela and... Like, foot up in the air, holding this for two minutes, <laughs> Wolf Doctor. Hey, my signature pose is like an Elvis-style lunge with my arms up. Come on, oh. that's pretty tough, too. I worry about you. You know, you got your, your glute workouts. I got my workout for oh. the day. <laughs> that was a great <laughs> panel. I loved it. <laughs> a lot of fun. And then we did have an anime Boston feud that I thought was hilarious. Yes, and we had some great players on stage and... I was impressed with the audience, too. I couldn't believe how many people came to the panel and how loudly they cheered for Team HN and Bikun. Yeah. So in the end, Team HN did steal in that final section because Bikun couldn't get all those points. I know. Bikun was dominating until the end. They were crushing it. It was. And I was actually surprised. A lot of people didn't quite know how the Family Feud game worked. Oh, I mean, that comes up. That's why I try and go over the rules a little in the beginning. Because it's if you don't watch it all the time. It's true. It's not an anime. We could do an anime <laughs> Family Feud, though. That could work. That could be fun. Have different people as their character. Oh, yeah. And we we didn't reuse. Obviously, we're not we're just reusing mm-hmm. the the questions from PAX East in this case. It was a totally new set of questions. Ms. Silver had to put together a whole new panel. I think you made some improvements in terms of the points and scoring. So I think it worked out really Ooh. well. And I want to thank anyone who took a survey to help us out for either of these conventions. There were 648 people who took that Anime Boston Feud survey. Which is awesome. You guys rock. Thank you. You make it so much easier. (laughs) Yeah, I really appreciated the response to that. And let me just also take another moment to compliment Anime Boston staff and like organizers for the prize support they had for this. Of course we had trophies. Mel made a new set of trophies. I thought she was dressing up as a Totoro. It was a trophy of a Totoro. That made sense to me. But Anime Boston provided tons and tons of DVDs, earrings, pins, uh, weird little bells, manga, all kinds of things. I was just so impressed by how much stuff Wall Scrolls, they had to give away to not just the winners of the panel, but just to the audience for coming. So thank them all for coming. So thank you so much, Anime Boston. You're great. So we're going to talk a little bit about the other events that we went to. But first, I just wanted to give a shout out to just the dealer room and the artist's alley, especially the artist's alley in specific. Because artist's alley, I feel like it's the only place I ever end up buying anything because they have stuff, unique, cool, art, Pins. Pins are so in, of course. Oh. Pins are so in. Yeah. One of the things you spend all your money on in Anime Boston, absolutely. But I just appreciated getting to see a lot of very different individuals' stuff. 
Artist Alley used to be just prints back in the day, oh. but now it's got a lot more cool random things designed by different people. When I saw people were selling microfiber cloths, I don't I don't want to say I was so excited. With those. I'm sorry. I need them for my my VR, my 3DS, my Switch. I need them for everything in my life. So whoever has started this trend of microfiber cloths, yes. Yes. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the other events we went to in Anime Boston. Ooh. I did get to help out. I met up with and you you talked with him a little Taffy Jones who yeah. helps run some of the other game shows, but I did end up helping out a little bit with the Pokemon Go scavenger hunt. Oh, that's scoring. so cool. I wish I could have gone oh. to that. I was just too tired. But people there were so excited, and I think he knocked it out of the park again. So next year, I, I want to go and help out more with this because it's, I mean, it's for Pokemon. I love it. It's fun. That is awesome. Uh, that is a great concept for a panel, too, I think. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. it's, they, they kind of call it Pokemon, don't they call it Pokemon Snap? Oh yeah, Pokemon Snap. Yeah, like it's it's and you, I thought it was gonna be like a Pokemon Snap the game tournament, but Ooh. it's real life Pokemon Snap. They had to find different things like you know find an evolution, and you'd get bonus points if you had Multiples more than one in, in a picture. picture. Yeah. Just like just like Pokemon Snap. So oh yeah, see, <laughs> yeah, it was great. Uh, we also went to a few of the other like major events. Like mm. I I went to the jam room. I have to call out this band that I loved. <gasps> I. They often invite for Anime Boston on Friday and Saturday in the mornings and like early afternoon before the major events go on. Mm. They invite smaller bands to play in the jam space is what they call it. It's basically just a small ballroom that has tables and a few rows of chairs in the front so you can go and sit. And I saw this band. They're a rock band that does, you know, Japanese rock and anime and game music covers called Ichiraku. Oh, and it's it's like a, there were six people in this band and they were all very talented. So they could be playing, they could play anything, right, if they needed to. But this is what they love to focus on. And they just sounded great. And the guitarists were especially playing it up. They, they had a wireless <laughs> guitar uh, instead of having to be hooked up. So they, they ran out and jumped in, you know, mosh with the audience Aww. and stuff. They really sold it for me. The lead singer was great. The keyboardist, the drummer, all these people just really had it. And the, they were really performing their hearts out. And if you have time, you should go to the jam space at any of these conventions. That's where I first saw um, Ocarina Boy. Didn't David you see? Ramos. Was that the first time you saw? I feel like Insane in the Rain said his first time playing at oh, PAX was in one of the jam, jam spaces, spaces, too. I mean, you will see people here that, as the Wolf Doctor said, the amount of talent is out of control. And one of the things is, like, all these people pl are playing because they also love video games or anime or whatever it else it is at that convention, not just because they're incredible musicians. So they share that passion with you and they really put that into their performances in a way that you can really love. You can tell. But yes, the name of the band is Ichiraku. <gasps> I-C-H-I-R-O-C-K-U. Ichiraku. I will put a link to their YouTube in the show notes. Thank you, Wolf Doctor. I can't spell, so that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, links are the best. <laughs> yes. But let's talk about the other awesome events we went to, we did go to this year's Masquerade. I always enjoy this. It's one of the few things I can kind of remember from the first year of Anime Post <laughs> a long, long time ago. But you'll see cool skits, costumes. Two of our friends were participating in the Masquerade, like Becca and her husband Connor. and They were dressed as characters from Nier. They looked beautiful. The detailing, oh. I was most impressed by the weapons. Those oh, weapons were great. Yeah. Great weapons. I loved it. But you, they have a mix of just costume entrance and then also performance entrance uh, who ha do skits. Some of them even sing live. It's pretty cool. And I, just like you were saying about the construction of things like weapons, I was impressed by whoever did the skit with the Zelda cosplayers, and they had this beautiful dragon. You can tell I haven't played Breath of the Wild 2, really. <laughs> that had multiple <laughs> puppeteers on stage carrying this dragon about. It was gorgeous. One of the things about the masquerade is it's also the time when they announce the winners of the AMV contest. Mm. So every year they have an AMV contest with multiple categories, and there are a few sessions where you can go and watch all of the AMVs that are up for awards. They also have like an AMV room that has themed blocks. You can go see AMVs, which I love too. We went to go see some of the comedy AMVs, for oh. example. But 
we had a few favorites of the winners that were announced during the masquerade. I mean, for me, my personal best in show that I saw there won Best Other, and it was called Run Makoto Run. And this video was masterfully edited because it had the single character Makoto going through different iterations of different games, TV shows, movies, everything, just morphing through all of it. And it was brilliant. Everyone should watch yeah, it. It was it was a great concept and oh. executed incredibly. Like they deserve to win an award. Yeah. You would see references from, you know, older things like Ferris Bueller's Day Off to Mortal Kombat and everything. I do have to give a shout out to the winner in the comedy mm. category because I just I love the comedy category in general. And it was called Use My Code for fifteen percent off this <laughs> AMV. And it was it was basically a bunch of slightly off and hilarious anime com- related commercials like you'd get on any square squarespace etc type ads if you think about <laughs> yes. those ads that you get on podcasts a lot it or youtube channels so they were parodies of those ads and very hilarious that, that one was brilliant so congrats to you and you done good <laughs> that's right <laughs> Well, Ms. Silver, are there any other really awesome things you saw at Anime Boston you want to give a shout out to? Other than just the fact that everyone there was cosplaying, it seemed oh. like. So I didn't even notice this on the schedule, but I'm glad that Professor Evergreen, a.k.a. Leon, pointed out that the official voice actor for Leon in the video game was at Boston Anime. And I actually got to meet Alejandro Saab, and he was a great wonderful nice person he was way too excited to see someone dressed up as leon as him yeah <laughs> he's like you're dressed as me and leon had to actually airdrop to Le- the other Le- other oh, leon photos? voice actor nice. yeah the photos that they took and i didn't realize that in addition to voicing this character from pokemon that he also voiced a character from genshin impact and this is the only character from genshin impact that you know that, yeah, just by never playing the game, I know who it is because it's a character that's reminiscent of Anubis. I remember. You bought, was, t- call crazy. back to last podcast yes. where you bought one of Rachel's prints of Sino. Yeah. And so I had to, of course, get one of these cool pictures he had there. I'm like, how is this possible? You voice, possibly, I know nothing, but this must be the greatest character in Genshin. <laughs> I'm convinced. Must be because it's the only one you know. I know. So I was very excited. All right, I have one last thing I want to mention Ooh. from Anime Boston, which is the Museum of Fine Arts had a booth. They were giving away like plain tote bags and also beautiful metallic shiny tote bags about their newest exhibit called Hallyu, the Korean Wave. I hope I'm saying that right. I'll just say the Korean Wave because I know I won't say that right. So they're doing a show that includes a lot of, I think it includes a little bit of classical, but a lot of modern art and design, music, fashion, and such from Korea. And that show is on until July 28th at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. It just opened a week or so ago, right before Anime Boston. All I know is I saw something that looked like Squid Games. Oh, that's definitely included. (laughs) That's definitely included. But, I mean, they they have, you know, K-pop bands, fashion... Um, classical art, all, just all kinds of different things coming, you know, new stuff coming out of Korea. So we are definitely going to have to go down there and check it out. It looks awesome. I can't wait to go. Their booth also was a standout because they did 360 videos for their booth and it was hilarious. <laughs> yes. You should check out the cool video of the Wolf Doctor and I. I look crazy, but so do you. So I always look crazy. Yeah. All right, Miss Silver. That's our quick wrap-up of PAX East in Anime Boston. That's why we've been mm. away from the podcast for a while, because we've both been working <laughs> on our stuff for that. And now we're both just dead. But we've turned into Phantom. Yes. Didn't that happen to somebody during... I know. I'm trying to think. Did somebody I think get someone the in, in, in yeah. PAX East got the Phantom end. I know. I have to go back and check. Yeah. Uh, we are going to pretend to be a po- podcast about Pokemon and talk a little bit about Pokemon this week. We totally missed out discussing the Pokemon Presents from like a month ago. But it was a pretty good one. There was a lot of really great announcements. And the one thing I asked for, they gave us in the announcement. I wanted a sequel to Legends Arceus. So we got Pokemon Legends Z to A. Yes. And if you haven't seen this trailer, Mega Evolution will be returning for this. Yay. 
Yeah. That's yeah. cool. So the gameplay style is going to be more similar to Arceus? That's what it looks like. And the graphics just from the trailer look phenomenal. That sounds great to me because I thought Arceus was a great game. That's definitely my favorite of all of the modern Pokemon games. Uh, yeah, I really, I was a fan. So that will be coming out. We don't know when, but they've announced that it will happen. <laughs> Why isn't it coming out now? <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about Pokemon Go. We've... We've glossed over a lot of things in the last month or so, but let's just get contemporary with this. In, like, only a few days, on April 7th, it's Community Classic for Bagon. Ooh, bagels are back? Bagels are back, baby. And it's a great way to help complete your Dragon-type medal, if, like me, you haven't completed it yet. Ooh, I don't know if I have. I have my doubts, Miss Silver. (laughs) I have my doubts. Wolf Doctor, I have a confession. Uh Uh-oh, is it about Bagons? No, but it's just because of PAX and Anime Boston, I actually miss doing my daily quests. I missed, day. oh, I missed at least <gasps> once or twice. I missed at least once or I'm twice. Bad. It was bad. It was bad. When I, especially when you're dri- like if someone else is driving you, Ooh. if you're in a, a Lyft or an Uber, or if Miss yeah. Silver is driving you. Which, you were playing. Yeah, that's like a good time to just be like, okay, let me check my... But, you yeah. know, in, especially at PAX where I was driving most days because I was t- taking Mel yeah. and the trophies and stuff like that. So I drove a lot and did not play. Uh, but now we can finally catch up, I believe. Right. Back to the season of wonders, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you buy the wonder ticket, Miss Silver? Wolf Doctor, I did not. My life is sad. Did you get it? I, I did because it had a lot of different little mini quests. And I like mm-hmm. having all the different quests and research is going so those are kind of the thing i between hatching eggs and doing (laughs) random quests those are the things i like the most part two just started it started beginning of april and uh, there will be timed research tasks to get encounters with cherry blossom versions of all of the evolutions wolf doctor why would they do this now i want the wonder ticket the Wonder Ticket is sweet. It's had cool stuff and cool prizes. Oh. Um, it's including, you know, it's it's not cheap, but it does include a lot of different mini researches with a lot of prizes that add up to more than the cost of the ticket if you had to purchase them individually. Wow. All the evolutions with cherry blossoms. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, it's just a fun thing to do. You can get the web store ticket mm-hmm. and get some extra bonus research. It's... It's, I liked, that's how I spend my money in Pokemon Go. If I actually spend (laughs) real dollars, I tend to buy these smaller event tickets. Yeah. Well, Wolf Doctor, there are things going on in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as well right now. Oh, tell me more. What kind of raids and craziness are happening? So this weekend, whatever dates those may be, no one knows what this weekend actually is. I know. But there's going to be a new seven star raid. Or is that is that a bay leaf? Oh, I should say meganium. <laughs> a mega meganium? A ter- yes, a, a terrestrialized meganium. It will be psychic terra type. Oh, interesting. And that'll be April 5th through 7th and 12th through 14th. I like that they always do these for two weekends. That just makes it more practical. Though I do try and get it on the first weekend. I don't know what would be the best thing to fight this creature, but I'll have to figure it out by... <laughs> <laughs> the next yeah, it needs to be strong against psychic and grass. Ooh, uh, Miss Silver, you mentioned that there are a lot of different codes out now. One's for getting a, a sprig of Tito with a partner ribbon. Yes, and I, st- I still need to put this one in. You can get the sprig of Tito from the new Pokemon Horizons TV show that belongs to Liko. Oh, that's so cool. The code, and we'll put the code in the show notes because how on earth are you going to get one of these codes? <laughs> what does that even mean? Lico with 906? Is Sprigatito number 906 in the Pokedex? It could be. We're that far along, aren't we? Oh no. It is number 90. Wow. Six. <laughs> and one of the things about all these codes, they always they only have the number one and the, and the number zero instead of the letter I and the number O. So Lico with 906 like, in theory, for me saying it, you could learn to type it out. But I'm going to put it in the show notes because I think that's still really confusing yeah, with silver. it's very confusing. That code is good for months, though. It's good until the end of September. But you should do it now. Yes. yes Just you to should. make sure you don't forget. Okay, Miss Silver, let's talk about Pokemon shopping and deliciousness. 
And Wolf Doctor, I had seen preview pictures of this a few weeks ago, but there is an official video that came out a couple weeks of, I, I mean, I think this is a thing that we should all be able to purchase, you know, if we if we ride motorcycles. Everyone should have this. You know, Ross should get this. Oh, yeah. There is being developed, or I guess it's been created, a motorcycle shaped like Maridon. Oh, my God. It's oh. just so cool in the pictures. Yes. And the video, I mean, I want to, I've always been scared of motorcycles, but I, I would be willing. As you should be. I would be willing to try. As you should be. I don't <laughs> think there's a price on it, Miss Silver, so we're out of luck. Oh. <sighs> You can see people observing it and viewing it from afar. Children riding on it in a video. It, it looks spectacular. This is all in Japan, I'm assuming, of course. Yes, yes. We get nothing here. I'm sad. Very sad. <laughs> but there's so much more regular Pokemon shopping that we could actually even get, Miss Silver. Okay, these are things we can really buy, which is exciting. There's always new stuff on the Pokemon Center website. So much stuff. Graduation time is coming up for schools everywhere. Oh, that's right. That means new graduation goodies. But there are free Yamper plushes? What's going on with that? So if you decide to spend $1 million, no, that's not right, <laughs> $40 on the Pokemon Center website, you can actually get a free Yamper Pokemon doll plush. I am just shocked that it's $40 to get, like that's it. Yeah, like, it doesn't seem like that much spend to get a plush. I mean, you could just buy one, you know, decent sized figure or a couple small plushes. It and wouldn't take much. It wouldn't yeah. take much. But Miss Silver, we also mentioned that it is graduation themed, and there is a lot of graduation themed merchandise. You can actually get a Pikachu and Eevee diploma frame. That's amazing, and I, I, I kind of want to take my school diploma out and put it. Is <laughs> <laughs> that bad? That's. Not terrible, Miss Silver. I wouldn't blame you. If you have any friends graduating this year, you could get them the cool greeting card that has a special pin inside of it. Oh, it's so cool. And there are figures of the Eevee and the Pikachu with their graduation caps on. Oh. I just think it's nice. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Besides the Pokemon Center, though, there's always build a bear. Wolf Doctor, why does Build-A-Bear keep coming out with more and more amazing Pokemon? Well, this one's just incredibly huge. They're, it's like above average sized Build-A-Bear <laughs> of Charizard. They show an adult man holding it because it's too big for a child. Yes, this is an extra, extra large Pokemon. <laughs> and it comes with like a flight hat Ooh. and a scarf. It's almost special delivery themed. Y yeah, sort of. It's it's huge though. It's not cheap, Miss Silver, but it's believable because it's so big. A mere one hundred and fifteen dollars. Where am I going to get that? <laughs> Let's talk about non Pokemon shopping, like Nintendo shopping. Well, this is still Pokemon. Oh, this is still Pokemon. There is a new My Nintendo reward that's Pokemon related. Oh my god, it's so cool! It's a notebook. Like a lined ruled notebook with park Pokemon Scarlet and Violet partner Pokemon. And I always love all the fun new rewards. So keep gathering your My Nintendo points by checking in on the website. If you have a Switch, do your little missions on your Switch. And you can save up and get this too. Heck, yeah. Like even just going to the website every week, you can earn points. Mm -hmm. And I, I love it. I love those prizes. They're just so cool. But Wolf Doctor, there's something that we could go get right Meowth. It's not far from us in real life. Oh, I kind of want it, Miss Silver. Why yeah. are you saying that? Kung Fu Tea, which has a location near where we're recording, has a special Princess Peach, Peach Iced Tea to celebrate the new Princess Peach Showtime game, which I still have not played. I haven't played it yet, but there is a free demo that you can download on the eShop, so I might check that out. Oh, Maybe I should do that. That's a great yeah. idea. Did you play, oh my gosh, what was the Princess Peach game for the DS? I did not. I know the one you mean. I don't remember what it was called, but she had. She did have Princess Peach Super game. Super Princess Peach. I played through that while I was working. 
for Nintendo that summer because that was one of the games we had. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't remember that much about it, but it was it was fun. You could do a side-by-side comparison with Silver. Ooh. I wonder how many things they have in it from the old game. I'm curious. Ooh. Well, Miss Silver, you reminded me that, and I think, I, I heard about this, I think, first from Lucario the Ricario. Um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Symphony Tour. Oh. So, Wolf Doctor, there will be an amazing symphony that's kicking off in just a few months in August in L.A. And it will eventually come to Boston. So, if we want to go to the concert, I'm not sure how it will work timing-wise, but I'm hoping... March 8th, next year. I know this oh is a lot goodness. of advance like notice. 11 months in advance. 11 months. But we could always go down in New York to January. Or to January. In January. On January 11th, it'll be a little bit sooner. I'm kind of shocked by how many different far-flung locations this is happening in. So, like, the tour starts a little bit in L.A., Chicago, Texas, um, and then goes to Europe a bit, goes back to Japan for a while, Singapore, back to Europe, back to, up to Canada, just like all over the place. They have dates like once a week or maybe twice a week, but all over the world. So wherever you are, there's probably a concert nearish you that you could try and get over to. Yeah, there's, there's I mean, I think there's one in Australia even. Like you could Ooh. go anywhere. Look at this, Rome? What? Right? Like everywhere. I want to be a roadie and just go to this concert every week in all these locations. I know, that's cool. The ones for Boston are actually on sale now. Oh, It's at the that. Wang, Ms. Silver, uh, the Wang. I have fond memories of rehearsing at the Wang. I thought you should say you have fond <laughs> memories of the Wang, but sure. I always have fond memories of the Wang. <laughs> yes, we could buy tickets now. I cannot believe we can buy tickets now for a concert that's in 11 months. That's insane. Yes, planning. How can I do this? Well, Miss Silver, we talked about having favorite polka stops and gifts and stuff. And we need to put that out there a little more, I think, to encourage people. Maybe we should put it in the in the Twitter and ha- or the X Ooh. and have people comment on our X post about it. But I, I understand that Mel's favorite recent one was the one from me, from the Millennium Falcon, from my Christmas trip to <laughs> Disney World. And I feel like there's so many cool Pokestop gifts, especially from places like Disney. Like, you you always nail the gift game. I try, Miss Silver. I try to send you all the ones of, of upsetting or haunted things. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a favorite Pokestop gift that you've given out or received, please let us know. You can even tell us what sticker you put on it. Ooh, do you try and match up the sticker? I, tr- I like to try to give something if I can. If it's a good gift, I try to give a good sticker yeah. or at least a seasonal sticker so that when they, rather than just one of the generic messages, <laughs> so that like it's like one of the current stickers. So when you pin it and, you know, it'll help remind you of when it was from even. Yeah. It's good. Well, Miss Silver, I think that's all the news that's fit to podcast this week. Is that it? Yeah, we're doing pretty good. We should thank Uma the Urban Media Arts Center, for having us here to record. That's right. It's a great studio. And if you're in the, you know, north of Boston area, this is a a great, Urban Media Arts is a great organization that has lots of different AV stuff, classes, different programs. So if you're interested in producing your own content, it's a great place to get involved. Come on down. Well... Let's just talk about the show, though, and the show <laughs> notes, Miss Silver. Do you know where those things are so uh, listeners can know? Is that on the blog? That is correct. Is it pokeproblemspodcast.blogspot.com? That is very correct, Miss <laughs> Silver. Um, that's a great place for listeners to find the show. It has The actual show is posted there, the show notes. Mm. Uh, there'll be places you can comment or send us an email. No big deal. It's, it's all sweet. You can... Find the links to the iTunes or Apple Podcasts or <laughs> Google Podcasts, whatever these things the are Apple called. Play. Now. The Apple The internet. <laughs> the internet links to subscribe, rate, and review, all of that stuff. Uh, you can find a link to our Facebook Whoa. and to the show's X. <gasps> the show is an X. Isn't it Snow White and the Seven Pokemon? Why hasn't someone made that parody yet? I mean. Maybe it exists and we just don't know. Now AI is going to create it. <laughs> it's at Pokemon Cast. At 
Pokemon cast. And the X is a good way to keep up with the show because you don't have to keep refreshing your browser to look and see if we post something. Uh, it automatically posts to the Twitter. But wait a minute. Wolf Doctor, don't you have an X? I was told I do. Ooh. I think it might be the Millennium Doctor. Oh, that's a good one. It's the Wolf Doctor at uh. the Wolf Doctor. But Miss Silver, I thought you had one. Isn't it the, isn't it Ms. Donkey Kong? Oh, man. I wish it was. Ms. <laughs> Lanoon. How about that? <laughs> All of the above. Yes. <laughs> it's Ms. Silver. M-Z-S-Y-L-V-E-R. Ms. Silver. Mm. Well, listeners, thank you for joining us this week on the Poke Problems podcast. Thank you for listening. I am the Wolf Doctor. And this is Ms. Silver. And we're reminding you to... Game on! Do you think Jonathan Marlin is more of a, a Donkey Kong or a Mario? Hmm. Maybe he's more of a Waluigi. Ooh. <laughs> we should thank Jeff for helping edit everything for the Pokemon Adventure. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Waluigi. Wah.